which is a more... Okay, we can't do any of these things quite yet. We got we got to wait until Black Monday's been resolved. I mean, what, how is Black Monday actually hitting us right now? Project Visit, Cap, and Factory output. Okay, not bad, not bad. Yeah, okay, so the West Indies Union has gone cynically. The Canadians are intervening. We'll see how well they actually can do there. And New York City is still owned by MacArthur. South Africa is going to look very, very chunky. Yeah, there's a, a big ass chicken. That's that's what that's what that's what Amelia would have wanted. Okay, Twenty-four command power. I mean, a real national support, negative five percent political power gain for uh, half a year isn't really that bad of a thing. Is the King of Lithuania still that German guy? Yes, it's still uh, Vilnius II. Let's deploy more units onto the Polish border, because Poland uh, certainly is going to join the Moscow Accord. Which is going to be bad for us. Okay, we have 29% chance. We do want... I mean, we have a 60% chance of something going our way. Which, you know, isn't a horrible odd. Okay, man, as Wales declared war on the West Indies Federation, all quiet. 1% threat gain is not a big deal at all. And we do want that 50% chance of successful raid. Okay, we got you next. Then we're going to go for devolution in a bloody stock. One civilian factory and an extra building slot. More meh. God damn it. Okay. This is not good for us for, I think, obvious reasons. Ukraine has gone uh, socialist. No, but hey, look, a coup d'etat. Maybe. Hell yeah, let's go. And a successful raid ha has happened for us. Negative 5% threat for them. Okay, so you're purging the leftists. Okay, never mind. We're, we're all we're happy with the way things are going now. We are... Three weeks, I think? Oh, we need eight. We're getting points. Eight... Yeah, we're about three weeks for you to press one of these buttons. What about Belarus? I mean, Belarus isn't really doing anything super crazy, at least as far as I can tell right now. What's going on down here? Nigeria is probably going to win their war against Borneo Emirates. The Venetian Revolt. Togoland, the Ivory Coast, Liberia is doing its own thing. Cameroon, I think that war with these two guys. Actually, no, you're at war with these. There's a big war going on in Central Asia now. Yeah, Belarus seems like they're doing fine. Okay, Legionnaire Italy is going to war on the Venetians. We'll see how that goes for them. Well, we might say the SRI intervene in this war and declare war on the uh, Legionnaire Italians. I wouldn't be, like, super surprised by that. And Russia, of course, they're going to kill Turkey, they're going to kill Bukhara. There's no way they actually live uh, for too long. I mean, how many men do you think they're losing over there? Probably not that many. Also, we have no manpower, which is probably not good. You know, delete these armies. We don't want them here. We do need more guns. We're missing still 2.3 thousand. Only about half a year until that's rectified. High priority on reinforcements and on garrisons. Thank you. By the way, has anyone put any weapon into this thing yet? No, not at all. I mean, we have 268 artillery. You know what? I'm going to be nice to my allies in Eastern Europe. I'm going to put, I'm going to give them 250 artillery pieces. Okay, 
the National Lithuanian Olympiad. With patriotism rising across the country, the idea has been suggested to organize a National Olympiad of various sporting events with Lithuanian sportsmen and sportswomen, both uh, from the kingdom and from abroad, who will test their skills and compete in preparation for representing their country worldwide. This will be the so-called National Olympiad. The National Olympiad will be open to prestigious ceremony in just July, and all the participants will swear an oath to represent the nation in the international sporting events with all their might. Dedicate themselves to the nation and respect its history, culture, and traditions. This would be a fantastic event to rise up support for our government and calm the nation down. Absolutely! Endorse that shit now! I mean, East Turkestan, they apparently they have 5 to 25 divisions. And this is, I think, like all mountains. It's very easy to see how East Turkestan can just survive almost indefinitely. I, d I doubt the Connet has a decent air force. Also, we have 44. I probably should have pressed one of these buttons by now. We will go for sweeping the countryside. No, we will not. We're going to go for uh, a real national support. Okay, we're at 25% threat right now. Still all quiet. We're, we're getting actually really lucky on these dice rolls. Nothing too bad has happened yet. Actually, fights like a real Chad. I mean, they, they're always fighting that like two-front war, and they do pretty well, all things considered. Okay, free economy done in 45 days. That'll remove Black Monday, and we can start trying to get more legitimacy in the country. And then we can start going towards a. Uh, uh, federalization. I mean, that seems pretty good. Uh, what do we need? 37. I mean, we're not really building tanks, though. Tanks are very expensive, and I don't think the Lithuanian economy can really deal with building tanks. Maybe after we have 10 infantry, we can start putting some tanks into the, uh, rotation, but... I don't know. Like, it just seems, to me at least, like, too much of a risk. Cameroon has won their war. Apparently they're fighting the commune of Gabon. And we're still we're still about a year away from the war in the desert. Oh, what pope was elected? Uh let's let's see. Okay, Bulgaria's lost their war. It was Pius the uh ninth. So just um I don't know if that really makes any difference. You're the national populist pope. I think you're the social democratic, and then you're just like the liberal, I believe. Or conservative, you're one of the two. You know, South Africa is looking... They're looking pretty chonky right now. That, that's, a, that's a big South Africa. I mean, we have 151 political power. Like... Normally, I'd be like, you should... Upgrade your economy laws. But I also I want to get like a bunch of these things going. Because I'm sure this matters. I'm sure if we get this up to 100% or or at least a decent percentage. This will actually do something for us. I don't know what. But we can only do one thing at a time. Okay, so guys, we don't need this much. Ah. I mean, what are you? One civilian economy, infrastructure... I mean, the only thing France does is that they do um, get to hold me as a puppet state. That's really all French expansion after the collapse of Middle Africa. You know what? We'll go for the 1939 uh, artillery pieces. I think that seems okay. Okay, Collins holds on. Yelling into the void. We will go to early mobilization, because we can't do uh, more than one project at a time. At least take 90 days. Quite a bit. And which one do we want to do first? I think the first thing we want to do is get the Monument to Amelia Platter. We 
we do need some more aluminum. I will trade one factory for aluminum so we get our aircraft up. How many, how many planes do we have? We have 50 planes deployed and um, 11 in storage. Very cool. Now, I think it's too late for the Baltic Dutch to collapse. If they haven't collapsed by 37, I don't think they're going to collapse. That's usually more of a 1936 or at least or early 1937 event. Okay, so let's get you going. Good to do another counterinsurgency raid. But I think we just want to save up for the better decisions. The so Anqing is looking pretty powerful. I think they are aligned with the Qing government. Nepal's at war with Hardy Commune. What text do we want? Ah, uh, not rifles right now. So we still need to build like a thousand rifles. Getting new guns I don't think makes any sense right now. Go for the 1938 research. Syria is their independence. Yeah, Syria. Good luck with that. You want to rush the Ari Focus Tree? Well, I, I, what do they have in here? Bonus infantry weapons is not bad. Let's see, we got, uh, you know, pretty decent tank upgrades there. Support artillery. Cheaper artillery is pretty good. I see three. Yeah, I think after this is done. We'll, we'll, we'll finish Optimal System and then we... Yeah, I think a lot of these things we want to go with. Lithuania weathered a storm. With Lithuania beginning to recover from the storm and the tempest that was Black Monday, so has the people's trust in their king improved. Thanks to his very visible participation in many relief construction programs and other policies to help the commoners, Venus has won some loyalty, especially among the poor. It seems that the king has the intention to continue his large-scale public works even after the worst is over, despite worries from the cabinet that his grandiose designs will prove too expensive for the recovering nation. So again, a little bit more stability, a little bit more recovery, or legitimacy, I should say. An unwelcome visit. Interesting visitors arrived in Vilna's name. Prince Wilhelm von Uricht, the great elder brother of Vilna II, has since pursued a career in automobile engineering. And with the patrons of the late father are plentiful contacts, he has received a job in Dinner Benz, both in the engineering department and as a scale for new places where the company may establish itself. Today he seeks an audience with his brother directly, asking for assistance in convincing the cabinet to allow a large Damir Benz factory to be established near Vilnius. The role of such titan of German manufacturing will certainly provide a boost in revenue as well as a large number of jobs for the unemployed. However, Lithuanian media will certainly pick up the favoritism. You know what? Give me that more stability. Give me that legitimacy. We're at a beautiful 25%. I'm sorry, brother. But you're out of here. Are there any more of these being passed? Yeah, go to uh, early mobilization. Give me better construction speed for my factories. I mean, we're only on 14 factories right now, which is still pretty bad. We also have no navy whatsoever. I, I don't think it really makes any sense for us to start moving our way towards getting a navy. We could get more units as well. Done in about two months. And the cause of vision is great. Lothar the Great, one of the famous Lithuanian monarchs in the 15th century, has always been a symbol of Lithuanian fight for independence. He was anti-German and anti-Polish, he promoted Christianity, yet was tolerant towards other faiths and cultures. He was a staunch abstinence from alcohol, he was a great military tactician. Thus, he appeals to pretty much everyone in Lithuanian society. Already there was an annual celebration during his death 500 years ago, on October 27th, the day when he should have been crowned as King of Lithuania before his death, August 8th. The idea has been raised to promote the idea into a cult along the sea's Grand Duke, tying his image to the image of the government, and thus use its cult of personality to strengthen the legitimacy of the government. Give me that stability. We have a lot of political power. I think it's okay. Yeah, I think Lebanon does have some content, but it, it's rare for it to actually show up. Optimal system. The political views of Stati's 
As Kluzio stemmed from his Christian upbringing and his experience in both Western and Eastern culture, and studying in Moscow and Friedenberg alike, he came to view Lithuania as a fusion of rational Western culture and emotional Eastern culture. Leading both these rudiments to be equally important in that Lithuania, as something unique in the world's history, is a bridge between the East and the West, a nation which is able to manifest the best features of them both, if, if only its cultural and political system were reformed to ultimately draw out the rudiments and create a truly pluralistic democratic state. Salakius has been a maverick in Lithuanian politics for as long as he has been participated in them, Though a believer in social justice and a harsh opponent to free market capitalism, he denounced socialism as demigodic and atoministic, and believed in his basic Christian compassion and solidarity rather than revolutionary thought. He believed his fellow Christian Democrats to be inquisitors rather than politicians too, in his eyes which democracy should carefully weigh in the balance between individualism and socialism, saw as a reaction to individualism, i.e. capitalism, and draw out the benefits of them both. And the way to do so is through federal corporatism. Like many Christian politicians, uh, school Salakakis, I believe in economic co uh, corporatism. Our country needs to be organized into economic, cultural, political, and spiritual corporations. These corporations unite into even greater units, federations. Federations work uh, autonomously, resolving social issues among themselves without the need for extended government involvement. Politically, these fe uh, federations would manifest into autonomous Lithuanian, Belarus, and Polish and Jewish entities within a united kingdom. Economically, as a federation of trade unions and chambers of commerce, spiritually and culturally, culturally as a universal belief in Christian ethics and compassion. Serving as a strange, uh, a strange with, uh, which killed the society together, it should be noted that Salakos did not believe in an imposition of Christianity over Lithuania's non-Christian subjects, such as Jews. In his eyes, Christian ethics, such as the provision of the Decalogue, are universal among humans, even if they carry different names in different religions. Hydrate, oh, do I even have a drink? I don't. Ah, uh, delicious. We have one more day until you're done. Hopefully we get lucky again. God damn it, we, an arms factory was attacked. 2% threat, a little bit of damage. I guess like it's not that bad. The threat will never hit 100. I will bet top dollar on that. By the way, has anyone ever put more weapons into this thing? I'm gonna go with no, probably. I'm the only one who's done anything. Yeah, there's 250 artillery. Oh wait, no, no, someone did put in for these port equipment. But yeah, we want to rush our way straight down to the military industrial complex. Three military factories for such a small country like uh, Lithuania. Very good, very good. All right, let's put one more into rifle production. Wilhelm does not surrender. After being denied by his brother, Prince Wilhelm has begun searching for other opportunities. However, being disgraced in the country as well as lacking sufficient contacts outside of the royal court, he's failed to gather any backers. Thus, Prince Wilhelm has returned to Germany empty-handed, though Demir Braz does not give in to their attempts to expand into the east. You know what, let's make a Lithuanian agency. It won't take 30 days, it's not that bad. be done in eh, somewhat soon or quality less quantity why was this building for a negative 10 percent ah it, like i mean this building will go up after a while yeah, uh, do it do it anti-federalist activism from everybody in the kingdom of Lithuania, in support of a prime minister uh, as his ideas. In fact, plenty are willing to go as far as to declare them an act of treason. The prime minister has called for cultural autonomy, reconciliation with the Poles and Belarusians, and a deep belief in social justice has led many right wing Lithuanian nationalists to denounce him as a closet syndicalist, a traitor to the Lithuanian people, and a sellout to the Slavs. This activism is further radicalized by the poor conditions caused by Black Monday and ethnic polarization in Lithuanian cities stem from a Bundes' take, takeover industry there. It manifests itself in a form of mass protests, vandalism, and even outright assault against political opponents. Those skirmishes between armed nationalists and police forces have been registered across the country, resulting in dozens wounded in the country, shackled by terror. It is believed that the final activism is the work of Lithuanian Activist Front, the LAF. Okay. 10% more support for national. Get, get the LAF out of here. They have 50% support. Which actually boosted them up more. Very cool. Thank you. Uh, 
more times L. Political power plus 100. I don't think that's that good. Maybe I'm wrong. Yes, the West Indies Federation has once again formed. Does France have, like, or are they going to get this back up? No, they're going to get it back. Venezuela did take some territory. National Revolution in Andalusia. We'll see what the Dutch end up doing here. And the Dutch are just basic conservatives right now. Seeing these actually doing relatively well, I think the Kingdom actually might end up uh, losing this campaign. Which is a little sad for us. Also, Hungary, what the hell are these borders? Outlying federal borders. First act of the Southern government was to lay down the foundations for the Ottawa system. The outline the borders which all federal units shall be composed within the kingdom. Prime Minister's wish is to outline it according to cultural lines. Uh, however, the mere mention of determining the ethnic composition of Lithuania brings out several competing viewpoints. Some overblow the Lithuanian population, some Polish, some Belarusian. This song is so loud. Go to a different song. Um, and the reason is that because of previous census of Lithuanian territory were inaccurate, prone to nationalist fact twisting, and uncertainties regarding certain nationalities. Um, a new census was thus planned to take place and settle all debates once and for all. The Lithuanian census of 1937 can organize swiftly, allowing the government to quickly move on with the issue and start another project of the opposite system plan. We can take our time to make sure the data is accurate as it can possibly be. 